This tutorial explains how to reproduce and fix the warning message invalid factor level and A generated in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video I will show you several examples and in the first example I will show you how to reproduce and fix this error message in a vector object. So for this we first need to create an example vector as you can see in line 2 of the code. So if you run this line of code you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new vector object is appearing which is called x. And we can print this vector object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 3 of the code. And then you can see at the bottom that our vector object contains three levels a, b and c and four elements. Now let's assume that we want to add another element which is called d to this vector object. Then we might try to apply the code that you can see in lines 5 and 6. So in line 5 I'm first duplicating our vector because I want to keep an original version of the input vector. So if you run this line of code you can see that a new vector object is appearing at the top right which is called x1. And then we might try to add to this vector object another element which is called d as you can see in line 6. However, if you run this line of code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that the warning message invalid factor level and a generated is returned. And if you print this vector to the RStudio console, you can see that we have not inserted the character string d, but we have inserted an, an a value. So the reason for that is that our original vector is a factor vector and the element d is not a level of this factor yet. So if we want to change that, we need to apply the code that you can see in lines 10 to 13. So in these lines of code, I'm again first duplicating our input vector in a new data object, which is called x2. And then I'm using the s character function to convert our factor vector to a character vector. So if you run this line of code, the class of our data object is updated and then in line 12 of the code we can assign the new value d to our character vector. So if you run this line of code, our vector object is updated but no warning messages are shown anymore. And then in line 13 of the code I'm converting this updated vector back to the factor class using the sFactor function. So if you run line 13 of the code, our vector object is updated once again and we can see the final vector that we have created by running line 14 of the code. And then you can see at the bottom that we have added the value d at the fifth position of our vector. And you can also see that the level d has been added as a new level to our factor vector. So in this first example, I have explained how to add a new value to a vector object that has the factor class. However, we can also do that in data frames. And for this, I want to create another example data set that you can see in lines 16 to 18 of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data frame object is appearing, which is called data1. And we can print this data frame to the RStudio console by running line 19 of the code. And then you can see at the bottom that our data set contains two columns which are called col1 and col2 and both of these columns contain factors. So let's assume that we want to replace the last element of the first column col1 by the new value d. Then we might try to apply the code that you can see in line 21. However, if you run this line of code, you can see once again that the warning message invalid factor level and a generated is returned at the bottom. And the reason for that is once again that this factor column has not a level which is called d. And for that reason, we first need to convert the columns of our data frame to the character class, similar to what we did in the first example in case of the vector object. And we can do that by recreating our data frame as you can see in lines 23 to 25. And in this case I'm specifying the strings as factor argument to be equal to false. So if you run these lines of code a new data frame is created which is called data2. And this data frame contains 
character columns instead of vector columns. And for that reason, we can simply apply the code that you can see in line 26 to replace a certain value in this data frame. So if you run this line of code, our data frame is updated. And we can see that by printing the data frame to the RStudio console by running line 27. And then you can see that the last element in the first column of our data frame has been replaced. So now in the final data set, this last element is equal to the character D. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.